When a business starts investigating the viability of solar, it's usually along the lines of payback period, return on investment, basically how much they can save on their electricity bills. So in addition to utilising the rays of the sun to convert to usable energy, the actual physical nature of the panel also acts as a thermal shield. Effectively, it's a barrier between the sun and the roof with some unexpected positive benefits. This thermal shield effect results in a cooling effect for your business, which reduces the HVAC, the heating, cooling, air conditioning, ventilation loads. So with the thermal shield concept, it sort of makes sense, doesn't it really? You've got something on top of the roof, there's a gap between the roof, so there's an airflow, so invariably that's something on the top of the roof, and in this case the solar panel, is going to actually affect the temperature of the building below. So how much temperature difference is there between a building with no solar panels and solar panels? Data for the study was gathered over three days in April on the roof of the Powell Structural Systems Laboratory at the Jacobs School of Engineering. A thermal infrared camera was used. The building is equipped with tilted solar panels and solar panels that are flush with the roof. So both flat to the roof and on tilt. What they found was for the building researchers analysed, the panels reduced the amount of heat reaching the roof by about 38%. And this is why in a lot of cases, the HVAC costs of a building, especially a commercial building, can go down simply by having solar panels on the roof, regardless of how much electricity they actually produce. Using thermal imaging, researchers determined that during the day, the building was actually cooler under the solar panels. And at night time, the solar panels actually acted as a thermal blanket, keeping a certain amount of temperature inside the building. So when we look at a building, we're always looking at the thermal stability of that building from an environmental building design perspective. We want to maintain a perceived level of thermal comfort, which is really important for the inhabitants of that building. And when I say the inhabitants, I mean the office workers, the factory workers inside that building. Now, if we can reduce our HVAC costs and maintain a perceived level of thermal comfort that's accepted by all, and save money in the process, we're doing our job, aren't we? An additional benefit not immediately apparent is a decrease in the amount of UV light. Now we all know about UV light. It's necessary for biological growth, plants need it, humans need a certain percentage. But the downside of UV light, it destroys everything. I've personally seen roofs that haven't been in a very good state at all, and underneath the panels, the roof is virtually pristine and it's due to that reduction in UV light. So unlike a roof mount system, where the rain striking the surface of the solar array is captured eventually by the gutter system, with a ground mount system, the water simply runs off and this is something that needs to be addressed. These ground mount systems take up a large space and the actual surface area of the panels are being rained upon on a regular basis. So what we're talking about today is the ability for solar panels potentially to capture water and then redirect it into storage, whether it's trench system, whether it's an underground tank system or above ground tank system. So how much rainfall can be captured? For every one mil of rain falling on one square metre of surface, potentially you can collect one litre of water. Now how can the water be redirected into storage? Effectively, there are two main ways the water can be re redirected into storage. First, the use of a guttering system that connects to the solar panel framing system. Or secondly, allow the water to flow off the panels into a trench system or similar. The water can be stored in trenches running near the bottom edge of the panels. If you go down the road of a guttering system, obviously cost-benefit analysis is required. So I'm envisaging a guttering system that attaches to the framing of the actual solar panels and then redirects the water either into a trench system, an underground storage tank, or using pumps and above ground storage tank. 
The capture water can be used for watering of stock, irrigation of crops grown between or under the panels, or to periodically clean the solar panels via some kind of spray system. 